This is the Bar Stewards Enquiry. You are talking absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. In, in what way? You are an underachiever in life. You were, I saved your bacon one time. You were gone. Well, I couldn't save you. I, I said, oh, no, but you said the right thing. But well, that's why you don't know anything about racing, John. I, I didn't say I do. Right? I'm saying that... What, what have you contributed to racing? You are one of these take-out merchants. Take out all you can. Hello and welcome to the Bastards Inquiry. Yes, it's the entry preview indeed. Yes, this is an action packed show. I've got the best judges to go through the meeting for you. Joining me on this outstanding show is my counterpart, Jonas Lang. Hello, John. Evening, evening, everyone. Yeah, and also my two best national look judges, in my opinion, it's Andy Richmond and Chris Gartner. Good evening, chaps. Good evening, all. Evening, all. Yes. Evening, Lang. Just before we start the show, obviously this show airs first on, on Patreon, which obviously Patreon will know, and then it airs the morning after. So if you're listening to this at 9am and the prices have gone, pay you £7. <laughs> <laughs> Just announcement also that the Friday show this week is not going ahead, as we are backing a campaign, which is not to bet with the online bookmakers on the Saturday in a day of protest. And the reason for this is obviously, as we mentioned on sermons, open banking, it's a disgrace. Never submit your details. It's hashtag stay away for today. So if you want to get behind the, the motion, I won't be doing any online betting Saturday. I, I'll, you know, I'll happily watch the action. But we're allowed to tip today and you're allowed to bet on things on Saturday today if you want to join in for that. So please support this because we need to hit big corp in the pocket the best way we can. It's the only way they'll, they'll take any notice. Onwards and upwards for a good show. This is the best bets round where we go one, two and three points. I'm sure you're all wondering what we're going to be tipping. I personally have got some big prices for a change and a boring one. But I'm going to start with Andy Richmond first. Where's your one point going, Andy? Okay, I'm going to go to the top um, <laughs> which uh, I do like a go at a, a difficult handicap chase. So we're going to go to the, uh, the top um. I do like Bill Baxter in this. We won it last year, but I'm going to go with a, a, a Dracula horse, Henry de Bromid. Life in the Park. Mm. He's only won once over uh, of 10 starts over fences, but he's a really good jumper. And I think this trip might, this two miles five, might just suit him. Now, he ran a well for a long way. Paddy Power Chase, three miles soft over Crimbo. Don't think he quite got home. Few people think that he's beyond you know should go beyond three miles i think this sort of two mile five two mile six trip is perfect for him he did race on the worst part of the track there uh and then he ran an absolute corker in the wonderfully named trust a trader plate at uh, in the handicap chase at uh, at, the, at the fez over to it over sort of this sort of trip again but he got hampered at the top of the hill by uh Rian, who um actually knackered a couple of them as well at the top of the hill but he rallied well, stayed on strongly up the hill from a poor position behind the winner, Shake Em Up Harry, who also runs in this race. He's only gone up a pound since. I think this trip will be to his liking. He's got a good form at this time of the year. He likes these sort of big, biggest size fields. I think he'd be okay on the ground. And I want a one point on life in the park. Do you want Betfair SP or do you want the 10 to 1 with NT? I'll take bet for SP. Yeah. yeah. Keep away from them, you see. Yeah, anyway. exactly. That's it. Andy yeah. back in the cause. One point win life in the park in the top of. Okay, continuing the theme of betting difficult handicaps. I'll continue with my one pointer. And it's to back a good friend of mine in John Leng with his grand national tip, which he tips on Patreon at 100 to 1 a while ago. And Statler still at 50 to 1. I still pinch, pinch myself at the, at the price of this. No idea why it's this price. John made a super case back in the season as to why 100 to 1 was absolutely stupid. When you consider that Minello Indo is 22s and Statler's still 50s, they met at Tremor over the 2 6, for example, which is woefully inadequate for Statler. Statler was giving it eight pounds, it's now getting a pound. And there's nothing not to like. It's been prepped, clearly prepped, to lovely spins. John was quite happy with the two spins this season. I, I think, I think, John, John, are you still confident in this? What? Yeah, I'm a bit disappointed about the owner's comment. What did he say? The, the owner said he, he doesn't want to run unless the ground's got uh, soft at 
the start, he said if, if it's every all round, he doesn't want to run either of his horses. Right. Well, that's fair enough then. So I'll tell you what, wait until the decks, just in case they decide no and they're going to end well, up. Most of them are not running no better than the minute anyway. So. Yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah. Ch- check with your bookmaker on that. But it's around 50 to 1. Statler is he's, he's still a decent bet, that, in my opinion. I think the owner's off his fucking block, to be honest, because I mean, that run at Chamar was on every ground. I don't know where he's got that from, that horse needs stop at the ground, because it, it plainly doesn't. Maybe not bottomless, but which it could be. But, but None of them want it bottomless, do they? No. Nah. I'll kick us off with Statler. John, coming to you. Uh, right. Uh, Betfair Ball, funnily enough. Ah. Denman won his first Hennessy off 161. For you nostalgia fans out there. Hmm. Now, Eric Mullins could have put Corbett's cross away for the year and won the Hennessy off 157. Yet somehow he failed the need to take on horses rated like £10 and more higher than his horse. Here. To me, I think that's worth taking the hint because I've never had a lot of faith in shipskin. Um, I think Brave Man's game has gone at the game. And that probably leaves us maybe one to beat. The uh, Colomb. Yeah, the gold cup runner up that's probably had a hard enough face. Yeah, he did, actually. He did. Whereas this is pissed up at Cheltenham. So if, it, if it's going to tell, it'll tell on the one that's had the harder race, I would have thought. So I think this is a bit of value. So I'm going to chuck in with Corbett's cross one point win. One point win, John. 100 to 30 general or bet fair, SP. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Right. Okay, good stuff. Chris, finish the round. All right then, chaps. Right, I'm off on the, the Friday to the Mild May, uh, Novices Chase, and uh, I think the market's wrong here. I'm going to go with the Greenals or Rocco. Surprised they even got this lad back to run in the Turners, to be honest with you. Um, and I never thought the Turners was his was his, was his his trip anyway, really. You know, he's a... Uh, I think I think he's a he's a he's a three miler who's a a good third last year on and the the Sefton was was obviously beaten by the Mayor Apple away there, come off winning the the Martin Pipe pretty uh, pretty impressively, staying on well. I just can't get away from his chase debut. Listen, that was a novice's chase at Warwick, but you know he he put away two fairly decent cappers in Golden Sun, who's who's obviously won. Again at Kempton and Kilbeg King, who's, who's obviously been campaigned slightly strangely by Anthony there this season, but he's still a good, decent enough benchmark. Um, I, ju- I just think that there's more scope in terms of uh, him to step up in trip. I thought he was a little bit out on his feet over the trip in the Turners. I think the step up in trip back to Aintree on a on a flat track. I think he'll he'll handle the the soft grounds. Um, uh, I mean, I, I just think he's providing his right and sound, and they are absolutely over the setback that he had. I think he's. Uh, He's a he's a cracking bet. I think Kilancy Classico stepping out a big field handicap. I think he might be best fresh, although I do like him. I mean the favourite. I mean that ride Derek O'Connor gave on on the on the favourite there. I mean in the in the um, you know the Muir. I mean he, he talks about A B C D and E as the plan, didn't he? I mean fucking hell, it was it was it was getting on the plan F in the end, wasn't it? But remarkable mm-hmm. ride right, to to get him home. So. Yeah, uh, I think Oroko's good value in terms of being, I think he's third in the market at the moment, isn't he? So, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, four to one, generally available for you, sir, to finish the round for your one point win. So, Oroko, indeed, he looked very, very impressive when he when he won at Warwick before the setback. So, if Oroko is back on that sort of level, then he's certainly got every chance. Two point round coming up then. John, you start us off. 30 tomorrow. Impere Pass. A horse I played early on for the champion hurdle when we got the negatives about Constitution Hill. Mm. And he left me with a fair amount of egg on my face by performing all season as I was gagging with this sort of trip rather than the the champion hurdle trip. Mm. They've kept him fresh for this, as they have with Bob Ollinger, but I think Bob might not like this if it gets tough. Whereas this lad's every ground winner, 
it, it's hard to get very, very tough on, on that track tomorrow. So I think with one to beat, I think this horse is showing around about seven to four. I think even money would be a more realistic price, to be honest. So I'm going with that one, two points win. Yeah, seven to four for you, John. What I was thinking, I, I was thinking of tipping that, but the nine to four to seven to four, just like, just got the knee. Yeah, I still think he's a, a smidgen of value, to be honest, because I, I can't see many people fancying Bob and a puff out him like this, you know? I think the TV will be all over Bob, it being Rachel, oh, Bob yeah. Ollinger. He tends to be a loving with him. But yeah, I like, I like the selection, Perry Pass. Uh, definitely, he was sort of like on my radar. Chris? Your two pointer, please. All right, I'm going to do a bit of a hedging wanker here hey. on the top of them, and there's a bit of thought in the reason. Um, one of them is Life in the Park, um, Andy's uh, selection there, and he's he's obviously wow, made uh, Claxon. Yeah, so 0.5 Claxon. So, and the other one is uh, James de Burley, who have had in my mind for this race for for quite a while. To be fair, um, I, I'm. I'm a bit more. The reason why I've split this and hedged this is I'm a little bit more negative than than perhaps Andy is on the uh, the ground for for life in the park. I, I I think they would have thought that they would have got better ground for him. I thought he ran fine in 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 the uh, the plate, but he's always I think he's always shaped like a bit of a an, an entry horse. The the reason why he's not a full on one is he's just a, again I'm I'm a little bit more skeptical about whether he'll he'll, he'll enjoy it. Um, James de Burley on the other hand will will absolutely love the the soft grounds. I think they've been working on his mark all year. Um, I think they gave him a bit of a float up in the plate there. Jacob is fortunately off town then a massive upgrade. Years ago, they were talking when he first came over. I mean, clearly he's had setbacks and was off for 600 days. But they were talking about this lad as potentially a gold cup horse, weren't they? You know, when he come over with a mark of in the in the 160s, he's obviously not lived up to that. But I just think I could I could see these fences bringing him to life in the same way that a couple of years ago um, Mullins won it with. Uh, Live, love, laugh. An uh, eleven-year-old there, and he did it back to back. I think it's a race that he he targets. Last year, he had the the top weight who ran well for a uh, in in the same uh, in the in the in the same connection. No, sorry, different connections, but um, the similar French bred horse there running quite well for a while. So yeah, split uh, split stakes in the top of them there. Good stuff, right? So it's a point on each for life in the park. So it's, it's, would you like Betfair SPs or prices? I'll take the prices now. I, I can see James de Burley going off uh, a lot shorter than he is. So, so we've got uh, 10 to 1 life in the park and we've got 10 to 1 for James de Burley. Are you happy with that, uh, Chris? Yeah. 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 yeah, good stuff, right? You must have paid your subs on the odds checker then to be yeah. able to have a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Controversial. Well, I well, know it's like ten or a month to see price history, isn't it, and stuff yeah. like that. Now. And Andy Holdings each way thieve bets two hours earlier than than planned. Christ, anyway, and they're moaning uh, about our seven pound, don't they? Jesus. Oh, Pat, seven pounds for the lot that that, that you get with, with passion. It's it's ridiculous. So anyway, so yeah, join if you haven't joined. Um, right. So coming on to the top them again, we better get the winner of this. <laughs> Because I'm tipping in this. Andy's going to hate this. I know he is. It's Lounge Lizard of Henry Dale. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> An absolute rogue. He, he really He's not does. so bad lately, I'll give you that. The thing for me was, I think, you know, like uh, Chris just said about James de Burley and these fences just livening him up a bit. I think this horse came alive for the ferns in the beacher. Now, he got beat 137 lengths, so people say, well, what are you doing tipping that? It was keen throughout, but he, he in the main, he jumped really well, barring the odd blooper. Well, and the fact... He came alive if he only got beat 137, Well, 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 Charlie Dutch just e- eased off him mm. when he was when he headed three out. The thing is, John, down the back, he's probably one of the likelier winners. I mean, he, he was 13 to 8 in running on the machine. Great. This is over three and a quarter miles. Right, so I just think the gallop they're going to go, and Jonathan Burke has rode this horse quite well the last twice. He's gone well with him. 
second to Garlow, you've got to admit, chaps, is a good run at, 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 at Cheltenham in January. And he backed that up by out-dogging Dibble Decker, which is not really a performance of note. It's just the fact he, he, he still had his head in front on the line. And I just think these ferns will bring a lot out. He, he enjoys it. And I think this is where Lounge Lizard will end up being underrated, perhaps. So I'm going to go a bet fair SP because I, I believe I believe we'll get a prize because it is a very competitive affair. And two points on the nose, Lounge Lizard. If you do do it on Betfair, make sure you've got your lays in at short especially, prices. Especially on the running when he's yeah. jogging. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a long last furlong if he's still there at the last. Yeah. It comes with the proviso, but I do like it. this. It does, it does, it does. Right, Andy, finish us off for this round, please. <laughs> if you're going to back Lounge Lizard, don't go and watch some of his races from last year because that will put you... That will don't put do that. Off, He's a young ghost that's still only seven. He might, be a, he might be a reformed character, I'll give you that. Right, hmm. we're going to go to another tricky, another really tricky handicap, the 220 on Friday. The horse I've had in my mind for quite some while, or well, since the Imperial Cup, and the horse is making headway. Um... He was making his six-year-old, the six-year-old was making his handicap debut in the Imperial Cup, having won twice over hurdles in novice company and twice running well in graded races. Although that level over hurdles, it probably looks a little beyond him now. I do think he might actually be a graded performer in time. He got a soft lead at Newbury when he dropped back in class from an entry grade one. But I thought it was quite a relatively stiff task making his handicap debut of one two nine. He got a positive ride there and did pretty he did pretty well actually in the end in this Sandown race he lost his place turning for home and i thought oh he's going to drop out the back of the telly here but he stuck on really well um to finish fourth behind horses who've probably got more handicap experience i thought they might go and run him he had entries in the coral cup and the martin pipe the stable had won the martin pipe the year before with the aforementioned iroko and i thought they might take a chance and run him in the end they didn't run him here at running there and they've um, they've saved him for this I, I did write in my notes at the time it may be better to wait for something at aintree while looking further ahead he'll be one to note for a chasing career next season i think he's probably the next hopefully the next iroko but in the meantime I think a little point each way on him in the 220 on Friday wouldn't be the worst way to go. Mm, interesting. John and Chris, I, I always keep all your notes, and both of you like this horse as well. So, Andy, I'm going to give you 10 to 1 each way, five pegs. Is that that'll okay? Do. Yeah, that'll do. All right, that finishes the round, then. We're making headway. It's interesting, because I know for a fact John and Chris yeah. like this, this resource in their notes. So on that footing, then, we'll start the three-point round and get by crap selection out of the way first, and then we can come <laughs> on to you, bods. Just about, a short one. This is the skinny one. Well, I, I call it skinny for entry. John loves this kind of race. It goes in the mare's bumper, and it's, yeah. it, it's, yeah. it's Bike Willie in the bumper. Baby Kate, she is a very good mare, really good mare. The mother was second in this race and went off a well back 15 to 8 favourite, but was done by Popeye in the closing stages. Unfortunately, uh, she didn't manage to win this, but obviously turned out a very good stay mare. And if you watch Baby Kate at Cheltenham, she's got stamina in abundance. And uh, this is what's going to probably be needed for an extended two mile. You know, this is this is just about two mile one, barring 11 yards. And she will she will devour this ground and she's not the biggest but that doesn't matter the engine is enormous as you'd expect with wicked willie's jungle juice flowing through her veins 11 or 4 uh, to keep it in the family and probably go one better than augusta kate her mother to sky and william Hill. I- i'm happy to i'm happy to bet better at that on the day if, if it's on that, that price on the machine i shall be having a, a jolly good old perk at that one baby kate three points win andy richmond come back to you Okey cokey. I'm going to split. I'm going to do a bit of um, split staking here, but we're going because partly because we're going to another difficult handicap, um, and it's the 230, the William Hill handicap chase, registered as the freebooter handicap chase. This race used to be run. I'm sure, this race used to be run later on the card, but I think they've moved it. Anyhow, um, the first one I want to mention is a skeleton horse, the King of Rye Hope. Obviously. Mr. Skelton is going for the trainers' championship along with uh, Mr. Mullins and Mr. Nichols. 
and he's run six horses in this race. And they've all run pretty well, to be quite honest with you. And he had one well, the winner of this last year with Midnight River. I've liked this horse for a long time. And the one that really sort of put me onto him was when he stepped up to three miles last time out in the Reynolds Town. And he was still in really good contention there until he made a mistake at the last. He only got beaten three lengths. His record, fresh, is pretty decent. Uh, he's had a break of 56 days here. And I think he's unexposed over this trip. He handles soft ground. I think he might be a little bit better on the better ground. Rather like Chris, that's why I just want to sort of hedge the bets a little bit in here. But I've got a feeling it might be uh, one of these. Um, I do think Skelton is one of the best target trainers. And I think he's targeted it at this race. And the other one I want to, I want to back in the race is forward plan. I love this horse. I think he's a really gutsy horse. I think he's a horse who could, I think you could see him in a national in time, but get his mark high enough. He's only off, he's off 133 now, but he ran really well to win at Kempton last time out uh, when the uh, his regular rider, Ben Godfrey, got a really good run out of him to pick that race up. I thought they might have a crack at something like the Scottish National with him uh, this year. It looks like they're going to come here in, instead. He's been improving all year. Um, even from his first run, which was when he was sixth in the Badger Beer behind his uh, stable mate, Blackjack Magic. And he's won twice since, um, one at Doncaster, one at Kempton, ran a really good race and another good handicap at Doncaster. The stronger pace they go, the better. The only slight question mark is the Honeyball Yard and not in the greatest of form at the moment. But I'm going to go with these two in the 2.30 on Saturday. The King of Rye Hope and Forward Plan split the stakes. One and a half points win each. Six to one, King of Rye Hope. Eight to one, Forward Plan for you, That'd Andy. Nice for your one and a half on each. So, let's come to Chris now for your max bet. The old three-pointer. Andy, just so you know, I'm with the owner of Forward Plan tomorrow. All right. We- <laughs> yeah, so... Him. I, I, would, I would have told you beforehand, but I, I wanted you, you to see put him up anyway. Uh, no, he's got a good chance. He's come out. He's come out yeah. really well. They, they didn't the think. That, I think he's a really nice yeah, horse. Yeah, genuine. Does what he does. Yeah. You know, does enough. I think the kid gets him really, really well as well. Ben Godfrey rides him really well. He does. He's underrated, Ben. Actually, yeah. um, you know, by by a lot of people, not not Anthony, but um, yeah. I mean, he's come out really well. Um, they yeah, uh, that they're, they're a bit worried before the ground, obviously before Kempton, but I mean, Kempton doesn't get, it, it wouldn't be heavy, heavy, uh, you know, it wouldn't be Nicky no. heavy, would it? Um, but, but he, he handled that. So, I mean, the, the cap has obviously reacted, hasn't he? But, uh, yeah. you know, he, he'd have a, a good chance as any, I think. Yep. So I thought I'd just throw that in anyway. Yeah, so thanks, Chris. going to the top novices hurdle, I'm going for mystical power here. The Supreme works. This, this, you look at the Supreme for this race in the pocket with the same connections. Um, John Bon, um, Belfast Banzer, Jesus, how did he win that? What a what a rank, what a rank top top novices that was. But I, I think I think providing that this horse handles the grounds, albeit he does have some, you know, the Moscow Flyer was fairly soft, wasn't it, at Punches Town? So providing that he handles the ground, I think he's. Uh, I think he's got a bit in hand. I just think the nature of the the track, the nature of the pace in the race, um, as as well, will will help him. It's more to do with the the the, the nature of the long straight, um, as as well. So I'm fairly confident he can he can front that supreme form. Um, I, I'd have question marks over O'Brien's mare. I'd have question marks over Scott's. Uh, Mayor as well. The, the, I know it's a three-point round, but I will be having a saver on Mullins's other horse. I actually thought he was a bit of an eye catcher in the Supreme. There, I know he finished fifth. That was only his second start over um, obstacles. He only he only came out in January, moving over from France. Um, he, he he loves deep grounds. I mean, he won on Limerick heavy. So although. Mystical power will be a three pointer. I think I'll be I'll be playing Mr. Giff on the uh, on the track as well. Ten to one on Mr. Giff in places. So yeah, I mean mystical power fifteen to eight, Chris, or are you yeah. looking for Betfair SP? No, I'll take that now. Yeah, he's uh, yeah. I think he'll go I think he'll go fairly short. 
Yeah, Fire, Firefox as well. I think I, I'm, I'm surprised they're running him over this. I know, I know the ground obviously is a bit more testing, but he just shapes like he just wants a bit further. I'm surprised they didn't go up, up with him, you know. Mm, indeed. Right, good stuff, Chris. So, John, finish us all off for the week. <laughs> Hey, 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 get your funny sound ready. <laughs> Another klaxon. Yeah, photo five Friday, life in the park. Ah, uh, the bar uh, stewards are now invested in the top of chase. We should become sponsors of this. Gotta nail this, John. Yeah, go go for it. I mean, make your case, John. Well, this for me, this got a stinker at the fair. He kept letting it drift back. Great jockey swap, I would suggest. <laughs> I mean, for me, they should have won. I think it should have beaten Shake more, Harry. Every, everything being equal. And uh, I'm not so worried about the ground. I think he'll cut through that perfectly all right. And uh, three points win. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you having the 10 to 1 NC, or do you want some bet fair stuff? I'll have some bet fair stuff, I think. Mm. Right, interesting. So we've got a foghorn. It's essentially a, a foghorn. We have a very rare foghorn bet, and, and this is a foghorn. So and the thing's just come out at Aintree, so that's a sign, isn't it? So we're all there in, you aren't go. we? There you go. <laughs> and, of course, Chris is, lives local to the track. Chris, I mean, before we come on to the next bit, so you, are you certain that this is going to be, like, really gruelling? You, you're confident this is going to be a gruelling? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I mean, they compacted the ground... Um, last year but uh, yeah i mean if you if you believe any of the sticks i mean it would as andy says before we, we've had we've had some rain up here like you know um it's not stopped it again this morning rained all yesterday didn't it chris rained all yesterday. yeah it's not you know it might not be red marauder levels but won't be won't, won't be far away between the uh between red marauder and Earth summit anyway you know i, I yeah. think we've got another layer in post to be honest because I don't see how you can go from soft, heavy in places, 10 mil of rain, and then no change in the official no. ground. In itself is a lie. Simple as that. You know? <laughs> All lies. Well, yeah. that is, isn't it? Well, there's no question about that, mate. They're, they're actually stiffing people with information like that. I mean, look at the festival. I mean, it, I mean, it, it changed, he had he, he decided to have a little walk round after the cold slices were put away, and uh, <laughs> he's changed it to heavy as well. I mean, you know, half eleven it gets changed to heavy, doesn't it? You know, mm. you know. I mean, it's been an absolute farrago again. This for like what you'd call a showpiece meeting, you know. And I mean, the the press have done nothing about it. I mean, there's only Tony Calvin called it out. Yeah. What's Tony said, John? I've not read it. Well, basically, he's kept everybody updated on the going and, and pointed out the fact that they've had 10 mil and no fucking official going change. But you, you get none of this from, like, I tell you, mate, the Racing Post haven't touched it with a barge pole because, obviously, their advertisers are perfectly happy for people to be betting on ground that they think's better than it is. Yeah. It's, it's scandalous, isn't it? Are we all... Uh, is, is there any of us, like, a tad worried how the ground might ride on... Saturday, and it, it might not be a very good spectacle. The stick rating of three to me is barely raceable, and I think it's going to be grisly, especially in jail with the new whip rolls. This is the first time when they've had a national with these whip rolls where you can't give them a crap to make them take off. There'll be jockeys flying in all directions over the last 10 fences, I'm telling you. Yeah, you watch last year's race. Because of the fence, they all went on the inside. I mean, look at the first three fences, they're all on the inside. I mean, it will, and, and there's no reason to suggest now with six less horses that they won't all go on, you know, standing start, all try and get on the inside, and then on sticky, gluey, heavy ground. I mean, when these places get knackered, you'll try making them jump in last mile and see where yeah. it gets. I'll tell you where it'll get you. It'll get you about 14 foot up in air when they dig the toes in. You make some valid points, because if you look at the Beecher chase that they ran, obviously I pointed out with Language Wizard, there were five finishers in that. He was tailed off. I know they only 12 started, but nevertheless, weren't a great spectacle. They were absolutely bollocks, and that was 3-2. So I'm, I don't know how they're going to be finishing over this finish. I'll tell you something now, Lee, right? And this is a failing I've had all week. I think this race is absolutely ripe for the first disqualification for all the use of the whip. Do you reckon? Yeah, I do. 
because you're yeah, talking uh, knackered slab chasers going for half a million quid, and yeah. these aren't enough smacks to get the fuckers round. Yeah, and, and I think on that, John, as well, you're going to have, you might even have two or three yeah. finishes, you know, and, and, you know, let's say two or three handle it, they're coming down, you know, they're like, they're, that big run, it, you know, it's still a big run in. You've got a Corret Rambler and Vanillier situation where Vanillier's trying to make up ground. Jockey's already done his, his you know, his whip. I, I, I really feel for the jockeys in this, I do, honestly. Yeah, you could mm. be right. Right, coming on to the Nash then. Obviously, <laughs> I mentioned Statler, whether that, that gets a run or not. John's not so hopeful with all the owner not that enthusiastic about running on very testing ground. He's a bigger squad than what he sells, isn't he? <laughs> He's got enough cash that owner, though, hasn't he? So Let's go some, through some other runners, then. Correct, Rambler. 11 to 2. Fav, what are we saying about about, about him? Any, anybody got like a standout opinion on him? I thought he had a really hard race in the Gold Cup, didn't he? He looked knackered at the end. Yeah, I, I think it's too soon, personally, Chris. What what is all this? The amount of times I've heard he hadn't had a hard race. It's the fucking gold cup. Yeah, yeah I... of course he's had a hard race. But listen, he's an incredible horse, isn't he? To be fair, mm. I, 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 I'll be worried. I, I'm worried about a lot. To be fair, I'll be worried about. I, I, I mean, I wouldn't have him at the price anyway. You know, he can win. Well, he was straight after, after that, big... straight after the gold cup. If you looked on the anti post market for the Grand National, he was about five point two. He's drifted out to eight now. You've got rain, you've got potentially a standing start, you've got potentially, as John makes the point, you've got him trying to come from a patient <laughs> ride on, mm-hmm. on this kind of ground. I mean, good luck with that. I mean, good luck. I mean, how much energy are you going to need? I mean, completely different. Into it without giving him a belt or two, are you? No, I couldn't have him. There is a reason why it's just rough quest, isn't it? Mm. It's a very tough renewal this year with conditions. It's, it's really hard because in recent times, since they've changed the national course, it's not so important anymore to make the running. At one, mm. at, at one time it was, obviously with the big fences, you ought to be handy because it was all about, it was a jumping test, not necessarily a massive stamina yeah. test. Hence why back in the day, I'm not saying two and a half mile, but three mile horses winning the national because it was more about the jumping than it was about the stamina. Sadly, now we've got an Ida with ferns. It's brutal. And I, so, in a way, if it wasn't soft ground, as we've proven with the safety records in recent times, it, it's been fine. But I would say, under these conditions, watching the beta chase back, it kind of think well, there'll not be many going. Like with a circuit to go, I don't think. That's what I think, anyway. But I mean, I am Maximus, chaps. A very enigmatic horse. What have they given him for the Nash? They've given him 159. That seems a relatively fair mark. Very impressive when slamming Vanilla at Fairy out Views? I don't think you want a quirky horse. <laughs> I think this has got its quirks. It can, it can run in snatches. And I, th- I think these conditions, you're looking for something that will travel to the mile pole. Mm. Otherwise, you're not going to be in business. Fairy House, I mean, Fairy House is very different to Aintree, isn't it, as well? I'm not convinced that, that it would be the same same sort of no. test, really. I'm not um, convinced about his jumping. No. So we're, say, we're saying we need a traveller. If we need a travelly thing, what about Marla Mission? No, he travels. <laughs> he does, in spades. He won the National... Well, he didn't, he didn't win the National Chase. He came down in it when maybe he would have won. I don't know. No, he would have. I'm, I'm convinced he would have. Yeah. Yeah, that was a really good run in what you and well, what we'd all know as the Hennessy. Exactly. You think you yeah. just went up enough for that? It's it, 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 seven pounds. Yeah, he's on the stiff side. I, I don't think he's got anything and, but I don't necessarily think what was going to win the national this week. No, no. You don't need. I don't think you should be looking for pounds in and. I think it's what you think will jump, travel, do its thing, and stay. Get to the fourth last without you in any smacks. Because it won't matter. You can have thirty pound in hand, but if you don't act under them them conditions, it, it's just a waste of time. And, and like you said, John, with our rules in the UK, what, is it seven smacks, Andy? Yeah, I seven, think you've got, I think you've got to get to the fourth last with six yeah, smacks on your sleeve. To be honest, 
Right. Do we think the rules are bonkers in the yes. fact that then you can yeah, have... Of course, where, where, as John has always said, and I'm pretty sure he's always said, is that putting a number on it is that that's, that's, that's the downfall straight away. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree with that totally. You're putting a Byronie number on and you're not taking into account conditions, are you? You know, a national on good, a national on good soft or a national on heavy. I, I mean, but, but you've still got the same amount of of number, haven't you? So, you know, like anything, you put a binary number on anything, it's bollocks. Well, the BHA won't get their arms round right is the fact that this, on Saturday, them 34 lads are going to have to make their horses fucking work. Mm. And they won't do it, man, blowing in their ear. <laughs> Whispering sweet nothings. <laughs> it's the uncomfortable fact that the BHA refuse to defend, they won't try and sell it. So here we are, right up shit creek in races like this in these conditions, because it's an absolute fuck-up waiting to happen. I can't wait for the race now. I know, we're really promoting this. <laughs> Don't you think it's sad, though? And I've seen a lot of people say this, that when approaching what, when I were growing up, when I were a lad, it was the flagship race of the season, like for Jumps fans anyway. And it was like, oh, yeah, look forward to the National. Everyone loves the bet in the National. And now we're all shitting ourselves. Yeah, you can't wait till it's over. That we don't want to see knackered horses having heart attacks and falling down. And, and all over the news, the winner gets the winner gets disqualified for getting too many smacks because Animal Aid yeah. will say horse <laughs> half beaten to death to win the national. Yeah, yeah, but MGM or whatever they're called don't pay out <laughs> because of that. <laughs> yeah. But Chris, it's the golden era of sports betting. You should know that. It's the golden era. The golden but, era. But then they got Chris Rock to do a new one where they said, it's not always golden. Betting is not always golden. So it's like, hang on a minute. You've just said it's the golden <laughs> era. And it's like, now you're backtracking and saying, be responsible and stay safe. How mm. can you stay safe when you're betting? End of day, you, you, you either, like a verbal asterisk, yeah, that, isn't you it? either do your bollocks or you win money. It's fantastic. <laughs> that's, that's what it's all about. But, not with open banking, you won't be doing your bollocks. You won't be getting any money in. This is it. So remember, hashtag stay away for today. Because it's important. Why are we even talking about this race when we're boycotting it anyway? Have your bets tomorrow or Friday. Yeah, you can do it Thursday or Friday. Do yeah. it. But Saturday, give them nothing nothing zero if you're gonna bet what we do advocate is find your local independent withdraw some cash and bet in cash with your local independent and it's that simple support those people rather than big corp that are absolutely destroying the game as we've said on many sunday sermons right back to the national looking at a few more potential we've identified what we need we need a traveler we need something that will jump and stay. So my two Premier National Hunt judges in Andy Richmond and Chris Gartner, what are the two travellers and what will stay? I'm going to completely undermine everything that I've said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't half like this Mr Incredible. Yeah. He actually looked like a fairly normal horse in the uh, the, the Midlands National there, didn't he? I was reading a comment about, uh, you just don't know what, uh, listen, it's a standing start, it could be, it could be all over for him, couldn't it? But I mean, they're, they're, they're talk- the way that Patrick talks about him, who I believe, interestingly, I think Willie's given up on him. I think he's just let Patrick have a little little project in Colston there. And um, but if and it and it's a big if, if it, it lights him up, he's 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 got some class about him. You know, the yeah. the way that they they talk about him, they they've talked about him as a as a, a you know potentially graded horse and we talked about the changes in the race haven't we and uh just potentially as that little bit i actually thought he was going okay i watched the race back last year uh, last year's race and i thought he was going okay and he had, <laughs> he had like the bizarrest unseat didn't he it was, it was like the me. slowest unseat ever it was at the canal turn the second time round wasn't it yeah yeah he got rid of brian hayes yeah, if he goes off, if he behaves himself and he's in the mood, then I think you're at the top end sort of the market there, you talked about not having a lot in hand. I potentially think he might have a bit in hand in terms of, you know, capping. Meeting of the waters, he ran pretty well in the Ultima there. I don't know. I think he, he might not have a great deal there. Um, wears a hood. He's willing at the weight, isn't he? 
Yeah, he is. Yeah, and uh, you could argue that was exactly the same thing as Correct Rambler last yeah, year. And that, and that race has got a really good record as well. So he would he would be he would be mine. I mean, to, yeah. to clear an interest, Marla Mission was the first horse I backed for the national this year ages ago. Yeah, uh, I did yeah. join in on Statler and Panda Boy was the other one. I thought he's got a, he's halved in price since I backed him at thirty threes. Martin Brazil trumpets are out. Yeah. Uh, uh. But uh, said before, said before he goes and wins a national. But there are a few other interesting ones in there. Limerick Lace is quite interesting. I'm not sure they were going to thinking of running her until she won the mayor's chase, and she's well in as well. I mean, if it comes up a real slog, that thing of Skelton's that that the Skelton mayor Galia Delato. Yeah, that wouldn't be a million miles away. Just mayors and mayors and the national hand is. Uh, you know, there's a reason why they don't win since the 50s, isn't there? But yeah. uh, maybe a veteran wins this year. I keep staring at Delta work. The one I keep coming back to on, on the ground and the way he won the Welsh National is Nassalam. Mm. Mm. That was a big old rise, though, wasn't it? It was, but again, does 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 the he'll love the ground, won't he? Yeah. That's going to be that's going to be half the battle is loving the ground. You could be as classy as you like, but if you don't love the ground, then... We're already saying, we're advocates of lack of finishers. We're saying that there's not going to be many completing and getting round and staying to the line. Then when... So when we talk about handicap marks, and we say, well, this could definitely run like seven to ten pounds more than what you've been allotted. On a normal year, I'd agree. Say, yeah. say good to soft, you'd be going, yeah, that's important. But I just don't think it's important. The thing I hate about Nassalam is he's gone up like what, uh, ten pounds? Has he ten? Sixteen. Yeah. Sixteen for Chepstow. But he's o- he's only actually carrying four pound more than he carried at Chepstow. He- he's in a range where you know he can carry that sort of weight over an extreme distance on filthy ground. Yeah, that really probably puts him in among the six finishers, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, if you look at special bets and stuff like that, like. Your Nassalam to finish would maybe well, be a good shout. Talking of special bets, Lee, if mm. we, and we've given Mr Mister Mullins fair, a fair amount of kudos in this, and he's got a fair few runners in this. What about the four to one that's knocking around him to win the British Chainers Championship? Because if he wins this, he's got a couple of decent chances in the uh, other decent chances at this meeting, and he's also got a couple of good chances in the Scottish National. We got well, Bart, Bartlett's told him to win the wick bread with Statler if he doesn't run in this. Mm. <laughs> you wouldn't say it's Nichols' strongest? No. Pick Diori last year was his main one. Well, you wouldn't say that bringing a battalion he here, would you? anything in the national, is he? Does he? No, he hasn't. Not that I can no. think of. Uh, he could win it. Skelton's obviously got Carla de la Toe. Um, but if Willie went and won this, then that's is it 500 grand. It's half a mil, isn't it? To, to the winner, so I think the four the four to one is is if you want a bit of um, an interest bet that keep you uh, keep you going because he's got a few other chances as well, nicking a few other races. That ain't the world's worst price if you can get on with the uh, the Stoke firm. It'd sum up British racing, wouldn't it? If Mullins took it, exactly. Yeah. What do we think to the TV hyped Kitty's Light? Uh, there's always a TV hype horse. Are we giving Kitty's Light a, a chance? I think it'd be worse than uh, if Plunkett had won it that year with Snow Leopard S one. Oh yeah, I have heard a rumor actually that Kate Garraway is going to be doing an IT race special if it wins. Saying <laughs> if only Derry could live to say this. To be fair though, you you wouldn't regrudge Christian Williams winning it after the year he's had with his daughter being very ill. Um, no, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Whilst we could do without the. Uh, the fest on ITV. Um, I'm sure they could as well. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's, yeah. that's the thing. They love a story, do ITV. Mm. They absolutely love that that kind of thing. They could have made the story out of Captain Ord when he did nothing and then yeah. he bolted up the other day. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. They, they could also make the story about the Christian Williams not off that run off 78 <laughs> yeah. round Foss Lass and end at 120. Just back and round Foss Lass, <laughs> you know it makes sense. But exactly, we all love it anyway. We love the game because we love it when they do it because it's like we can all join the bandwagon. Oh, I love this game. I love this game, love says Johnny Mercer. <laughs> Indeed. National, we're looking for a jumper traveller. Andy, have you got any like good stats on the National that you think could be useful this year? Or not, sir? I, I think it's, to be honest with you, I think it's just become such a, uh, a changed race these days. I'm not sure if the old stats really work anymore. 
no. It has become really, really changed, isn't it? The way that the shape and the race have changed. I think that I wouldn't be put. I wouldn't be put off back in an Irish one, two, three, four. Um, to be honest with you, um, or something, you know, something like that. I mean, we have only seen what f it's five times a weight in excess of eleven stones have been carried to victory since nineteen eighty three. But Hedge Hunter, don't push it. Neptune Colange, Many Clouds, and Tiger Roll on his twenty nineteen run. So. You know, the weight, but, you know, as we've been saying, is it really, you know, do we just want something that travels these days? I, I, I'm honestly, I almost pains me to say it. <laughs> you put the old stats in the bin and really just back a, back something that goes on the ground and travels. There you go. And stays and jumps. Yeah, and stays, yeah. yeah. I think as well, the stats as well, you've got to be careful there because, I mean, I can't think, well, I mean, when was the last time we had a soft or heavy national, you know? With ship senses. We've had about three or four, haven't we, in the last, what? Genuine, we're talking. I suppose, I think if you take the last, what, 25 years, Chris? We had Earth mm. in 1998. Red yeah. Order, which must have been the softest in 2001. Yeah, it would have been. Rule yeah. the World was pretty soft, I remember, in 2016. And wasn't Tiger, uh, Roll, Tiger Roll, when he was his first win in 2018, was... Fairly soft, wasn't it? These were all stiffer fences, though, as well, weren't they? Exactly, you know, I mean, yeah, when yeah. did the cars get taken out? Plastic uh, cars put into the fences. You've gone from like what was admittedly a milder jumping test in the 70s to this, where let's be fair, you don't even have to jump. It's not the race it was, and that's proven with the stats. For example, no horse in the national has fell at the beaches or unseated at the beaches since 2018. Tiger Roll wouldn't have got round in the 70s. No, I was just about to say that. Tiger Roll wouldn't have won in the 90s, would he? No, it's a completely different test to what it was. But mm. obviously, we've had to adapt with the times. Whether it works on this kind of ground, though, I'm not so sure. It's a worry for us all. Um, we're not really selling this very well, but just got to be honest, it's, we're just wanting everything to come back safe and, and, we, and, and we move on, which is a shame when you're talking about a premier the premier most valuable race in the national Hunt calendar this is where i would probably need to look at things i don't know i don't know if that's how we're behaving as people and we're saying oh well we're a bit worried here ask yourselves would you be that depressed if it got called up no but then i'm biased because I'm, I'm more of a flat man like yourself well, so. yeah but as we get for the overall good of the game I well, don't well, think it'd be a bad thing if they couldn't run it well that's it because you're just always concerned like given the bad press that the sport can get at times. To be honest, the sport is tremendous. And the, the Austin PWR, I think, is a decent initiative. But again, that website, imagine, I, I don't want to tempt fate here, but imagine if you had like four fatalities in the national. <laughs> right? Then that... That would be the last national. As well as that, Lee. I mean, you can, you've got you've got all these sweepstakes... 34 runners or, or whatever, and you're probably going to have four finish. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And, and the, once, the once a punter, you know, a year punter, you know, singing, what, you watch this every week, lads, you know? You bet on this every week. Yeah, you know? we didn't need the heavy ground, really. We needed, I think if you run an entry on good good to soft, I think it worked, it's worked really well over time, like since the modifications. It has worked, but I'm not so sure that this will work so well on this. Because the the thing is, as well, with the big fences, they went slower. They had to go yeah. slower in miles an hour because... They... they had to get them back on the rocks to jump them. Yeah. Smell the kicking them into it. Yeah. No, I risk of repeating myself. Watch that race last year. Watch what they do on the second and third fence there. That Every... Every every single jot's gone on the inside there. They wouldn't be doing that 20 years ago, would they? No, no, no they wouldn't. You could explore every part of the track, really. It wouldn't be a problem. It was just a jumping test, and it was actually... I'd say it was a, a good watch. It was a, a great exhibition of the horse, really, in, on the jumping ability, rather than just... This would be grueling. So we hope that it'll, it'll go well. Right, any other business chaps for the next three days that punters might find interesting? Andy, I'm coming to you first for any other business. I was pleased to see John have some confidence in Corbett's cross tomorrow because I do think that's very interesting that he runs him in the bowl. Mm -hmm. The Red Rum is always a race I like, the two-mile handicap chase. There was one I liked in there, a bit worried about the ground for on public, again for the uh, Guerrero Greenall partnership. I think there's one out of that that uh, I think ran well at um, 
in the grand annual Path de Rue. He's never won over fences, but I think he did. I back that, and you, yeah, I, I, you pasted me, Andy. Yeah, well, that, that, that won me the Naps title. I thought I'd just slip that yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah, you pasted me. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate, uh, yeah, Oroko, I'm looking forward to seeing, because he's a horse I really, really do like. And it'd be fascinating to see what the, the one that um, got given a, a really good ride around Cheltenham last time out. I know the way you're thinking. It'd be interesting to see how he takes the fences and a much sort of, Jesus, I thought, Chris said they were down to, what, plans, plan F. I think they were plan, down to plan Z at one stage, weren't they? I mean, that yeah. was I mean, amazing. I mean, keep watching it and you're just like, bloody hell, how does this thing get up? And, 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 win, and win like it does as well. Um, I wasn't particularly interested the, as interested in the the graded races particularly there's there's bits and pieces in there that are quite interesting but there was nothing else really that i i looked at there was probably those i think the livable hurdle was interesting um the race before the national um and be see if old side of burley can um can come back to uh can come back and win this what for the third year running um i didn't think he ran badly in the stairs so that'll be that'd be an interesting uh interesting one to watch and good luck if you're uh punting after the national right my take on the, the rest of the meeting was gin and pit but generally john i'd be interested to see how your favorite horse goes on blow your dad in the man- <laughs> manifesto <laughs> <laughs> you love that i want to know how they got away with that name <laughs> yeah yeah blow your dad i love it <laughs> I didn't know where he was running. He's having me crack here. No, no, he should be. He should be like Mondamage. Yeah, yeah. He's popping. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, coming on to what I think, I thought Grey Dawning would absolutely revel in them conditions of a 2-4. It's a, it's a bit obvious, boring, even money. The the one thing I'd do this week, and I might be terribly wrong and end up doing my brains, which is the usual, is I'd be against Henderson's runners because I don't believe you can have the horses all wrong at Cheltenham and then come back in. They won't know. They won't have a clue. They, they'll be it'll be, the best. it'll be interesting to see, Lee, if Sir Gino does get stuffed in that 220 tomorrow, what happens to the prices of um, Shishkin in the next, in the one after that? My nap lay anyway, even if Endo's runners do come back a bit, is John Bond. I just think that bad mistake he made at Cheltenham. I even said, cannot win, because I just thought he'll remember that. It was an uncharacteristic error as well. It was not one of his usual slick jumping, because that's what's got him through his chasing career so far, the slick jumping. He was terrible there, and I just I, I can't have a bar of him. That I'll, pro- I'll probably frame my entry around taking John Bon and hoping that Sergino wins, and everyone thinks Endo's back. I'll be be striping that hopefully at the right sort of price. John, your any other business? Like yourself, I, I can't have the end of analysis because basically when he's Pope old Cheltenham, he's he's had to give him easy, aren't he? Surely, yeah. So yeah. you're talking coming here off four pieces of work when eight would have done quite nicely, sir. Mm. You'd be concerned uh, on the punt in front. I agree with the novice chase you mentioned the skeletons, and I think. The yellow clay faces nothing of the calibre he faced at Cheltenham in the bumper. I think three to one's an absolute pinch job yeah. in the last race of the meeting. On the Saturday. Interesting. So me and John are going to nail both bumpers, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> John. I might run one in the mayor's bumper, actually. Have you got so, right. Really? Yeah, not now, Nathaniel. Yeah, not a big bumper fan, but well, uh, yeah, well, she's uh, she's a, she's an outsider, shall we say? Well, so, no, best yeah. the best of luck. What a day to be there as an Thank owner you. as well. Yeah, best of luck. O- up for yeah. a big run. Crazy, Lee, can't we? John's yeah. in the bumper. John, yeah, exactly. Yeah, get, get out on. That's it. John's given us all a, a get out race in the last when we're all doing shit. Desperation yeah. sticks. Hammer the snow. Vlog us down. Chris, finish us off with your any other business. Yeah, just the last in the in the red run there, uh, Sam Royo. Watch Mark on him and the uh, the Grand Annual there. Makes a move. Tries to go on the inside rail there. Absolutely no room whatsoever. Ba- basically, almost bounced out of it you know, as completely stops, then has to come wide. I've never had him as a Cheltenham horse. I've had him as a, I know he won the county good, good few years ago as a, as a five-year-old. It's obviously been frustrating, but he, he ran well in a manifesto, only a length behind Banbridge there. I could see him. I, I wouldn't 
I wouldn't be confident that unexpected party would, would back up that win. I think he was absolutely laid out for that ever since they won at Chepstow there. Yeah, Sam Royale, I think the big ground will be fine. I think Mark will, will ride him slightly differently. Long run in, I think, will be suit him better than than uh, than Cheltenham. Um, yeah, really quite confident on him. Good stuff. That's, that nearly made your list San Moir in the 440 Red Rum. Right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. And let's hope we have a great week at Aintree with all horses coming back safely, of course. And don't forget, there is no Friday show this week. We are back on Sunday talking more absolute rubbish on the Sunday sermon. That's all from me, John and Chris and Andy. Bye for now.